Good morning and welcome back YouTube and God bless all who have found this video. In this video I have compiled a bunch of scriptures pertaining to the end of the age. So whether you're a believer or a non-believer, after what you see here, you'll find that it's beyond coincidence. But with that said, let's get to it. Thus says the Lord, Remember this and be assured. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things long past, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things which have not been done, saying my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure, calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my purpose from a far country. Truly I have spoken, truly I will bring it to pass. I have planned it, surely I will do it. And Jesus himself said, Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Even so, you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near, right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in the days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And he says in another verse, It was the same as it happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, and they were selling. They were planting, they were building. But on the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained down fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. So he said, It will be the same as it was in the days of Lot, when homosexuality was lifted up. I mean, they even wanted to rape the angels that came and visited Lot. The people today are not far from that. Those days were so evil that God destroyed all flesh on the earth, except for Noah and his family. And it says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. And by faith, Noah being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Noah was warned, and he believed the things that yet were not seen, and in reverence he prepared an ark for the salvation of his household. So see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less shall we escape who turn away from him who warns from heaven. And his voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. And this expression yet once more denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken, as of created things, in order that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And know this first of all, that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts, 
and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice, that by the word of God the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But the present heavens and earth, by his word, are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all everywhere should repent, because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness, through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. And also on that day, according to my gospel, God will judge the secrets of men through Christ Jesus. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. For nothing is hidden except to be revealed, nor has anything been secret but that it should come to light. And realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, and avoid such men as these. He said in that scripture, men will be lovers of self, I'm 47 years old, but back when I was younger, we didn't take selfies of ourselves and we didn't have social media. We began to become, oh, and I can't say we, but I know kids that were in my neighborhood that I grew up with that were disrespectful to their elders, to their grandparents, because their parents were in prison. I remember my grandparents saying things to me and criticizing me and my friends because they had mohawks or we listened to rap music. To them, that was taboo. But we weren't really lovers of ourselves, not like these kids today. Lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, and disobedient to their parents. Our parents weren't that disobedient, not as disobedient as we were. And our kids are worse than we are. And their kids are worse than they were. Every generation has declined and has gotten worse as we near towards the end. These kids today are lovers of themselves. They literally take photos of themselves like narcissists. And Jesus spoke of these. And Jesus said, But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces who call out to other children and say, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. You didn't look at us. You didn't praise us. You didn't pat us on the back. And professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man, and of birds, and four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the lusts of their heart to impurity, that their bodies might be dishonored among them, for they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them over to degrading passions. For their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. 
And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a deprived mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are all gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, and inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. And although they know the ordinances of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. And Jesus said, But you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Do not be frightened. Those things must take place. But that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will also be famines. These things are merely the beginning of birth pains. For brother will deliver brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all on account of my name, but the one who endures to the end, he shall be saved. And many false prophets will arise, and will mislead many. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. He said lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. When you read back through the scriptures back in the ancient times when they traveled from town to town or land to land, they stayed with strangers. They took them in, they opened their homes and they fed them and gave them a place to stay. Try doing that today. But these men, a lot of them, were poor and homeless. Picture yourself at a fast food restaurant, sitting down outside and eating with your family, and a bum comes up to you and starts preaching scripture to you. Most people would probably just get up and throw their food away and leave. They wouldn't listen to him. And they didn't listen to these men either. Love of men has grown cold, folks. You turn on the TV and what do you see? A father killed his whole entire family and then himself. These kids are running into stores and they're looting and they're stealing everything and there's no consequences to their actions. Evil rules over us. Everyone accepts a bribe. Even our judges are corrupt from the top down. And Isaiah says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. And Jesus also said, Woe to those who are with child and to those who nurse babes in those days. And Isaiah also says, Their little ones also will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be plundered and their wives ravished. In Joel writes, They have also cast lots for my people, traded a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Woe to those who are with babes in those days. How fitting is that scripture? Our children are not even safe to go to school anymore without risk of someone coming in and killing them. And the women of the past generations used to consider it a blessing to have a child of their own. But these women today, they get hostile and angry and want to kill you for taking away their right to be able to kill a child in their womb. And he said, they have also cast lots for my people and traded a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine. Our borders at this present time are wide open. They're selling children into slavery. And Isaiah says, 
The expression of their faces bears witness against them, and they display their sin like Sodom. They do not even conceal it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. Say to the righteous that it will go well with them, for they will eat the fruit of their actions. Woe to the wicked, it will go badly with him, for what he deserves will be done to him. O oh, my people, their oppressors are children, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, those who guide you, lead you astray, and confuse the directions of your paths. Children are their oppressors, he said. Amen to that. And women rule over you. When in the history of mankind, folks, have women ruled as they do today? When have women had the authority in the numbers that they have today? The answer to that question is never. This is clearly speaking of the end. We have all these women in power. And some of the ones that are in the most powerful places are crazy or appear to be crazy. But like the scriptures say, God created everything for its own purpose. So these people have a purpose. That's why Jesus prayed for them and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do because that's what they were created for, for the, this very day. To destroy and dismantle and cause all this chaos. We have all this lawlessness and it's causing everyone to grow cold towards one another. Our streets have turned into a war zone in some neighborhoods. You have district attorneys that are not going to charge certain crimes. They're clearing out the prisons into the streets. And those people that are getting out that shouldn't be out are even taking the lives of police officers. It's complete lawlessness. And it's only getting worse. I watched them ask one of these women who sits in a high seat on the, superior, on the Supreme Court. They asked her to define what a woman is. And she couldn't do it. They are even wrangling about words and causing confusion, trying to change the definitions of what things mean. A woman in a high seat of power in the Supreme Court could not define what a woman is. You have people trying to tell you that men can have babies and that you can just change your gender. All these things are abominable to God and everything to do with the devil. Twisting and contorting all of God's creation. And it's all happening right before our eyes at a level never seen before. But how can you not see that? But just as it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes to see not and ears to hear not, down to this very day. And David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a retribution to them. Let their eyes be darkened to see not and bend their backs forever. So he says, The common man will be humbled and the man of importance abased. Man of importance. You think about all your politicians and all their dirty deeds and the shame that they are enduring right now. And I believe abased is actually worse than being shamed. But us common men at this present time are being humbled. The cost of a living is extremely high. And things are hard to come by nowadays for some. Woe to those who add house to house and join field to field until there is no more room. So that you have to live alone in the midst of the land. In my ear, the Lord of hosts has sworn. Surely, many houses shall become desolate even great and fine ones, without occupants. I told my son back during COVID, I said, these rich neighborhoods, your Beverly Hills, your Hollywood, 
I said, God's going to turn these places into waste places. They're going to be a wasteland. And slowly but surely, since COVID, he's been doing this. The streets are lined with homeless drug addicts defecating everywhere. Rich people are moving out of California faster than... You can't even find a U-Haul, they were saying. But these neighborhoods where these rich people, these people of importance, their neighborhoods are being turned into slums. They're being robbed while they're eating at their fancy dinners of their $20,000 Rolex watches, being shot for their French bulldogs, stealing their jewelry. Now they're robbing the homosexuals in West Hollywood when they're coming out of the clubs at night. All these things are happening because God is making them happen. These people that are doing these things, as I said, they are instruments of God's wrath. They are doing what he wants them to do. Behold the tempest of the Lord. A wrath has gone forth. A sweeping tempest. It will burst on the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has performed and until he has accomplished the intent of his heart. In the latter days, you will understand this. For seven women will take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. That verse makes me think about the women today, about how rebellious they are, and how they all want to be have like they all want to have men's names, they want to do what men do. But when men try to become a woman and compete in their sport, it's not fair all of a sudden. Even though the scriptures are clear about what a woman should be like and how they should dress, today they're going to tell you how they want to dress. Which is revealing a, a lot of skin, not realizing or not even caring or taking into consideration what they're doing. I can't remember who the woman was, but uh, it was on television. And someone had asked her why she always wears dresses that are always covering her body. And her reply was, I don't want to expose my flesh to cause my brother to sin by lusting. And I thought to myself, wow, wow. The way they dress today is completely different than the way my grandmother dressed or my grandmother's mother dressed. You go back and look at these old pictures of these women and they were covered. They dressed like ladies. These women today, they walk around with everything exposed. And then yet when they catch you looking, they get upset with you. They don't realize that they're causing a man to lust after them. And with that lust, they're coveting. And when they're coveting something they can't have, they take it. Thus says the Lord to the remnant, I permitted myself to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I permitted myself to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation which did not call on my name. I have spread out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in the way which is not good, following after their own thoughts. A people who continually provoke me to my face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on bricks, who sit among graves and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh and the broth of unclean meat is in their pots. I am one of these people who was not seeking him, but he revealed himself to me and permitted himself to be found. And the Lord said, I sent you all my servants, the prophets, again and again, saying, Oh, do not do this abominable thing which I hate. But they did not listen or incline their ears to turn from their wickedness, so as not to burn sacrifices to other gods. For Jesus himself testified, that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So it's no wonder they didn't listen to them. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom 
We have heard a report from the Lord, and an envoy has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise and let us go against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. The arrogance of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rock, in the loftiness of your dwelling place, who say in your heart, Who will bring me down to earth? Though you build high like an eagle, though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. I saw the Lord standing beside the altar, and he said, Smite the capitals so that the thresholds will shake, and break them on the heads of them all. Then I will slay the rest of them with the sword. They will not have a fugitive who will flee, or a fugitive who will escape. And though they dig into shale, from there my hand will take them. And though they ascend to heaven, from there I will bring them down. And though they hide on the summit of Carmel, I will search them out and take them from there. And though they conceal themselves from my sight on the floor of the sea, from there I will command the serpent and it will bite them. Now those two prophecies are talking about the end for sure because we've never lived in the stars before and we've never had the technology to go to the floor of the sea. But he's saying that all these things that we're putting up there, he's going to bring them all down. No one's jumping on a spaceship and going to Mars and avoiding what's going to come. Now the last prophecy I have for you was fulfilled on September 23rd, 2017 following my calling, or my revelation. I should say my revelation was unfolding at the same time that this prophecy was fulfilled, which was an alignment in the stars that has never taken place before. Revelation 12 was fulfilled on September 23, 2017. If you go back to that time period, and you look at the condition of the world and, what, and how it's declined since, you're going to see record storms year after year globally, record after record. You're going to see global chaos among the nations that has only gotten worse since then. That was like the, the clock starting, the birth pain. We're getting close to starting the Great Tribulation. Really, really close. We're still writhing in the birth pains. That's where we're at. But if you go back to September 23rd, 2017, you'll see that everything has only gotten worse since then. And it will continue to all the way till the end. That alignment has never happened before. And it will never happen again. They've even rolled back algorithms to see if it's happened in the past and they think that the closest they could come was 7,000 years ago, about the time of the flood. There's a lot of different theories about all that too, and the darkness and, the, and the, all that, but I'm not getting into that. But what I'm saying is that prophecy was given thousands of years ago before the technology even existed. Better yet, let's say you don't believe in God, but the Bible, as we have it right here, was formed 450 years ago. So those prophecies are still even good for 450 years if you're not even a believer. If you believe that the book was written by man, which it was written by men under the influence of the Holy Spirit, spoke by the Holy Spirit. And the book came together as it should, as it would, and how he wanted it to at the time so that we could have it now. See, these guys didn't have all these writings. One prophet read from the prophet before and preached and taught off that one. The same foundation of the prophets and apostles. That's where our foundation is built. Mine is anyway. It wasn't taught by any man. It was called. But these men didn't have all these writings compiled together into the book that we have now. As Jesus said, the law and the prophets were until John. John received the last visions when he wrote the book of Revelation. What is going to happen and take place is already written. 
You just have to know where to find it in the order that it should be shown. Anyways, this video has gone on long enough. I could have made this it take hours to compile all the prophecies throughout the scriptures, but I just picked the ones that I like the most. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and share it. I'm not going to ask for your subscription. God bless.